Hey everybody, back at the Bill Kasky Podcast. Glad you're here. As I said earlier, we've got people on video watching. If you want to watch this, if you're just a listener and you'd like to see me, I don't know why, but if you'd like to see the setup here and how we do things. And also, when I do go live, I talk to the audience for a little bit prior to going so that uh, give them some sense of what we're wanting to accomplish. So I'm glad you're here today. My name is Bill Kasky. I uh, do this podcast every week. We typically release on Wednesday. If you're brand new to the fold, to the family, we do uh, every Wednesday, usually 15 minutes or so. And I like to talk about things that I don't hear about in the world. I want this to be a place that you can come and hear content, ideas, strategies to help you grow your business, grow your personal skills that you might not hear anywhere else. Now, threading that needle. I mean, I don't know what everybody's talking about. I do know that I like counterintuitive things. I like the counter narrative. I like things that set you apart from everybody else in the world. And so that's what I uh, aim to do on this. If you'd like to get a hold of me and talk about how I can help uh, you train your team or, or yourself, you can go to BillKasky.com. Be happy to jump on a call with you. I've got a couple calls this week, actually, from listeners. So uh, that happens uh, almost every week. The uh, topic today I want to talk about a little bit is I want to give you three or four things that you can do to kind of recession-proof your business. And I know that that is kind of thrown around a lot. What the hell does that mean, recession proof? But I want to give you some ideas on how you can avoid this thing. And I know it's coming. It's like a freight train. It's coming at us. What is it that's coming at us? Is it a slowdown? Is it a recession? Is it a depression? I don't want to get too hung up in the in the nomenclature around it. But we do know that there are going to be layoffs. We know that there is inflation. We know that there's going to be a slowdown. So you'll have to listen to the economist of your choice and decide who you want to believe. Some people say, ah, nothing, just a blip. Some people are like, oh my God, this is... So once again, as with anything, whether it's COVID or politics, there are extremes. I would say if you shoot down the middle, you're good. But I do think there are things you and I can be doing, and these are things that I'm doing, so I just want to share these with you, to... Kind of get ready, prepare yourself. Not be scared, be prepared How about that. All right, number one uh, is kind of a back to the basics. I think sometimes when things are flush and money is everywhere and, and, and the economy is good, your customers are buying, everybody's open, I think we can get a little sloppy. I know I can. And you don't need to be all that good when times are good. When times are not so good and where there's a little tightening, I think we all have to be better. So here's my question to you. What are the basics in your business? What are the things you could go back to? Maybe you haven't been back to them since the last slowdown, if you were even around then, because I know a lot of my listeners are younger and they just they weren't even here. You're, you've never experienced anything like this before. Uh, so welcome. Welcome to the club. Welcome to life. But what are the basics that you say, you know what, I've gotten away from my knitting here. I'm not asking you to knit if you want to. It's a good pastime. But uh, I'm getting away from the knitting, another way of saying, that's an old phrase, isn't it? I always use old phrases. Is uh, What's basic for you? Is outreach basic for you? Is writing a blog basic for you? What have you done in the past few years that has worked to help you get in front of prospects, to help position yourself properly? What, do you, what have you done and are, have you forgotten about that? So think about that. What are the basics that you've neglected maybe over the past few years because you haven't needed them? There's no shame in that, by the way. There's no shame at all. But as we head into a tightening, I think it makes sense to go back to the basics. Number two, is your offer clear? And I, I brought this up the other day, and the person on the phone or on the coaching call was struggling getting appointments. And they said, oh, yeah, my offer is clear. My offer that the person buys is very clear. One thing that wasn't clear is what happens when the customer invites you in. Is that offer clear? That's your first offer. It's not to buy. It's to sit down and have an appointment and have a discussion. So what we found was that my client's first offer wasn't clear. 
And if you're struggling to get appointments, then I would recommend you get very clear on if the person invites you in and you have a meeting, tell me about what happens. Tell me about what kinds of questions you ask. Tell me about what you're on a search for. Tell me about what they can ask you, what you're going to bring, what they should bring. What's the tone of the conversation? Tell me all those things. And my client went from closing about, I don't know, he, he loves cold calls. I, I detest them. I, I'm recommending he not make them. But these are actually a little warm. They're, they've got some warmth to them because they were from a list that uh, he has harvested that people ask him for something years ago or months ago. His, his number went from like 5% of close to 25% of close. He 5X'd his close rate by very simply sharing what's going to happen if you invite me in. So that's an example of clarity of offer. Now, sometimes when we think of offer, we don't think of that offer. We think of the big offer, which I also think you should be clear about. If you haven't written that down and documented it in a PDF format or something, then you need to. All right, number three, final one, is your value. You know, I think your value is different today and heading into this winter, this fall, than it was in the last 10 years. A lot of people didn't need help necessarily with growing their business if your value is tied to business growth. If it's not, then that's okay too. But the question is, what is your value? The value that you bring, what is it tied to in the customer's business? What's it connected to? Is it connected to cost savings? Is it connected to uh, revenue generation? Is it connected to uh, reduction of redundancies? Is it connected to information flow? What's it, what is the reason that they should be paying attention to your value in this time that we're in? So you may need to retool your value statements and your proclamation of message and, and how, you, how you connect with your customer in terms of your value. Uh, for example, in our business, I do coaching and training of sales teams. And of individuals, but I I have two sides of the business. One's corporate work where a company invites me in and does, we do six months to a year or more. And I work with their sales team and marketing teams, helping them to create content, generate leads, close sales, uh, all those things. Uh, My business position probably won't change that much because the fact is they still need that. In fact, they probably need it even worse today because opportunities are not falling off trees like they were in the last three or four years, especially during COVID. A lot of, a lot of my clients grew a lot during COVID, uh, but now they're starting to see a, a slowing down. So m- the point is that my value really doesn't change much. I'm still interested in how can I help them grow their business during a time when a lot of their competitors are not growing their business. So those are the three things that I think are important. I want to shift gears here for a moment. I said this was going to be a potpourri. So those are my three recession tips. I want to move to what I would call the 2022 and 2023 marketing secret of the year. It's the, it's the marketing secret of the year. And I just came up with this this, this morning, actually. But I do think it's been happening for a while. That is this. You've got to bring value before, during, and after the sale. It used to be that the only time you needed to bring value was at when they bought. So the customer, the client hands you a check and boom, you drop into action and everything's moving and you're bringing value. I think that's a thing of the past. I'm not saying bringing value after they buy is a thing of the past. I'm saying that I think you need to be bringing value prior to the sales process, during the sales process, and after the sales process. So we'll call this BDA, before, during, and after. So how could you bring value before the sales process? Well, things like this. I'm bringing value to you today, and my hope or my thinking is that a certain percentage of you will like what you're getting, tune in next week, like it that, tune in the next week. And so you, you and I will develop a digital relationship here. And if I bring you enough value, at some point, 
you will need to talk to me or want to talk to me about your team or yourself. You might want to sign up for a webinar that we do. Anyway, there's some kind of call to action or offer that I'm going to make. And you're going to say, you know what? I like what Bill's talked about. I would like to hear more. I think I'd like to pursue a relationship more than just digital with him. So that's an example of me offering value to you before the sale. You can do this in your business too. This is not just my business. You can do it in your business. You could do a podcast or a week. You could even do a weekly video series on LinkedIn where you just answered questions from people that you got during the week. Maybe you do it on a Friday at noon and you take all the questions and all the concerns that your prospects and people you've talked to throughout the week have had and you turn it into something of value. So that way people see you as a purveyor of value. They see you connected with the word value. Every time I hear Bill, he brings me value. Every time I see Lisa, she brings me value. And so that's the before part. During the sales process, I think the sales process that you create needs to have value. Most don't. Most sales processes contain no value at all from the selling organization to the customer. Now think about it. We are asking people to go through our process. We are asking them to trust us all the way through the process. And sometimes they fight us. You know that. They, you ask to uh, talk to a CEO or a VP somewhere, and the, the buyer or the person you're talking with is like, oh, I'm not sure I want to let you talk to them. So you always run into resistance. But if you're constantly bringing value during the process itself, you will they will be more likely to follow your process. If you bring no value, if your sales process is all about shoving people through to get them to the end, if that's the only thing your process is good for, don't be surprised when people don't follow you. They won't. They just won't. So that's the during part. Before prospects, during the sales process, and then after. And of course, I don't need to go into after. But don't forget the during part. I know that uh, we're not very good at the before. We're very, really not very good at the during. And so you need to be figuring out how can you, during the sales process, bring value to your customer. Not just by showing up with your smiling face. I think that's awesome. But I think it's got to be more than that. So I hope that has helped today. So we got three recession tips. I did a little BDA. Glad you joined me today. Make sure you join me uh, Monday mornings generally. Make sure you subscribe to the channel on YouTube and click the notification bell and you know the drill, but that way you will be notified when we do go live. I'll see you next time.